Hello Year 10s, um, this is Mrs Elliot's hand and we're going to look at some of those exam style questions on functions that I set you for homework. So the nice thing about these just three questions is it just reminds you of the notation and um, also reminds you of the concept of the domain and the range of a function, which do is the thing that probably makes functions in the further maths slightly different from normal functions. So the first question is um, one that could easily be in just the normal um, GCSE. We've got uh, a function of n, f of n um, is equal to n, n plus one. Of course, n could easily be um, a um, uh, an x and n is an integer. So I've put it in that set notation that we've um, used a little bit before. n is a member of the set of integers, which are the z's. OK, so part um, A of the question says what's f of 10. So that basically means that wherever there's an n in the function, we're going to put a 10 in instead. So it's going to be 10 times 10 plus 1, which is 10 times 11, which is 110. Nice, easy one. Could easily find that one in a GCSE. And I'd hope that any boy or bishops would be able to do that one. Um, right, next one is f of um, minus 10. So again, just substituting in the minus 10 instead of the n and just be careful to make sure that you get your signs right on this, which is where people would go wrong. This is going to be minus 10 times minus 9. Negative times a negative gives me plus 90. So that's part A of the question. Second part of the question is um, f of n equals something and in this case it equals zero so just be careful when you get the notation for these questions it is definitely saying that the function is equal to zero it's not saying do f of zero it's saying the function equals zero so we know that our function is n n plus one equals zero and what you've actually got there is a quadratic that's already been factorized for you hasn't it it's n squared plus n we don't need to multiply out the bracket it's already been factorized so we know that something times something equaling zero means that either the n equals zero so that's one solution or n plus one equals zero so the other solution would be n is minus 1. So our two solutions are n equals 1 and n equals minus 1. OK, so um, if you've got any issues on that, just pause for a second. I'm going to rub it out in a moment um, and we'll move on to question 2. Question 2. Um, here we've got a, um, a function that's written in terms of x. So it is f of x equaling 2x plus x squared. So it's another quadratic. And this is important. x is greater than or equal to 3. This is the domain of our function. Yeah. So if you think about a function being a mapping from one set of numbers to another, so the x numbers, and there's the function going across and giving you some solutions, the domain is the values of x that you're allowed to use and the range is the answers or the y values or the f of x values i'm going to call them f of x there or y that come out of your function and here we're saying that x has got to be greater than or equal to three so if we were writing all the numbers into the domain which we couldn't possibly fit we would start at three yeah it doesn't say that they're just integers they can be any value yeah OK, so we've got um, values of x that are greater than 3. First part of the question, standard question, sort of a bit like a GCSE, f of 3.5. So just substitute in everywhere there's an x, put in a 3.5 instead. 3.5 squared, so 2 times 3.5 and 3.5 squared. 2 times 3.5 is definitely 7. Um, 3.5 squared... I'm just going to pretend this is on a non-calculator paper. So let me just do that. Uh, 25, uh, 15, and that is 17. That's a 15. That's a 9 plus that's a 10. Um, so I've got oh, a 2, a 2, a 1, 2, 2, 5. 
um, because it's 3.5, that's going to be 12.25. Okay, so I've got 7 plus 12.25, which is 19.25. Okay, so that's the sort of standard bit that could be in a GCSE question. The second part of the question um, is basically asking us, I'm sorry, I'm just going to get my question up so um, I can see it clearly, um, is basically asking us, about the range of the function. So when you ask for the range of the function, you are basically looking at this side over here. Where does this function map across to? And you could say with this function, it, because it's a quadratic, you could say, well, we're gonna have a U-shaped function, uh, sorry, a parabola-shaped function, and if um, we were looking at all possible values in the domain, the range would be from where it's at its minimum upwards. Yeah, so that would be our range. Now, with this particular function, we've got a restriction on the domain. The domain starts where x is equal to 3. So I don't know where x is equal to 3 on my function. It could be over here somewhere, could be over here somewhere. And so what I've got to do is think about what this function actually looks like for x being greater than or equal to 3. So I'm just going to sketch my function and that's always my top tip. So for range questions, so where is the question just says write down the range. So range questions, use a sketch. So we'll just have a little bit of a look to see what this function looks like. So it's f of x equals 2x plus x squared. And when you're sketching a function, it's good to know where it goes through the x-axis. So I'm just going to um, uh, factorise it. So when that equals 0, x equals 0, or... 2 plus x equals 0, so x equals minus 2. So I've got a parabola, it's a positive quadratic, so I know it's a parabola shape, and I now know where it passes through the x-axis, passes through the x-axis at minus 2 and at 0. So my parabola looks like that. Now I am only interested in this function where x is greater than or equal to 3. x is greater than or equal to 3. My domain only starts over here. So if my domain only starts over here, I am only interested in the range of my function that goes um, from this point here upwards. So basically, if I could find out what this value is here, what this value of f of x or y is for x equals 3, then I know that the range of my function, the range of values that it could take, are only going to be greater than or equal to that value. So I'm going to look at f of 3. f of 3 is 2 times 3 plus 3 squared. So f of 3 is 15. So f of 3 is 15. Then um, my function can only be um, uh, the range of it can only be 15 or more because of the shape of this one. So range for f of x is going to be greater than or equal to 15. We use the that notation. Yeah. Now, I'm just going to sort of just extend this question very slightly and just say to you that if it hadn't had that restriction of it on it, if we hadn't had the domain only starting at 3, which means that our function actually doesn't exist for this bit here, we would have had a full function for f of x. And there's minus 2 and 0. And if we were asked for its range, we would have been looking at this value at the bottom here upwards. Yeah, and we would have substituted in because we know that this minimum point is halfway between minus two and zero. We would have substituted in um, minus one 
2 times minus 1 is minus 2, plus 1, so it's at minus 1. So the range for the function, had it not had that restriction on its domain, it would have been all values of um, f of x greater than minus 1. It would have been f of x greater than or equal to minus 1. That wasn't the case because we had a restriction on our domain. Yeah? So the range of the function is the y values, the f of x values that the function can take. And if you've got a restriction on your domain, as you have in this one, then it can only be the values that are greater than that. And I would draw a sketch every time. Now, a thing I don't really like about this question is that you could have just substituted in um, 3, f of 3, you could have got 15 and you might have made a lucky guess without really understanding why. So that's um, hopefully explained to you why. OK, um, I'm just going to move on to question three. So if you need to make any notes from this one, please do. Right. Question three. So here I've got my function is this time g of x. Remember, function can be represented by any letter, although quite often we use f of x. g of x in this case, and it's x plus 2 over x plus 4, and it's for all possible values of x. And part a of the question says, what value of x must be excluded from the domain? Now, remember, your domain is the values, your x values, that you are mapping from with your function and your range are those y values or f of x values that you end up going to. So what they're basically saying is that you can put in any value for the domain except there's one value that will not work in this function. And the one value that will not work is the value that makes the denominator of the fraction zero because we know that the denominator of a fraction cannot equal zero because that breaks maths so the value that which x plus four equals zero is x equaling minus four so that's a good general rule um, for uh, functions that are um, expressed in uh, fraction form your denominator cannot equal zero and if that was a quadratic denominator there'd probably be two x values for which this um, function could not be defined and that you would have to exclude from your domain. OK, and then part B of the question, we're just solving it. So this is a bit of an algebraic um, fraction question. So g of x equals 2. Remember, this doesn't mean substitute in x equals 2. It doesn't say g of 2. It says g of x equals 2. So g of x is x plus 2 over x plus 4 equaling 2. And so we are just going to um, multiply both sides by x plus 4. Get rid of our fraction. We don't like algebraic fractions, so we try and get rid of them as soon as possible. Multiply out the bracket. Subtract x from both sides. Subtract 8 from both sides. x equals minus 6. OK, right. So that's the chapter 5 exam style questions on functions bit of a reminder of the concept of domain and range, of the, the notation that you're likely to get, and that um, it's a really good idea to sketch the function, especially when you're looking for the range. Now, I've also set to you some um, questions from chapter seven, and they are more like this. They are algebraic fractions questions, and I think that's an area that some people do struggle with, although I think you've got a lot better at it recently. So we're just going to do those as a bit of revision of algebraic fractions. Um, so these are the chapter seven exam style questions. And we're just looking at the first three of them, I think is what I set to you. I'm just turning the book to those. So they are on page, page, page 97. Okie dokie, right, so. <clears throat> first one is a um, an addition. No, it isn't. It's a subtraction between two algebraic fractions. So we've got a 2x plus 1 over an x plus 2. And we're subtracting from that 2x minus 1 and x plus 1. 
As soon as I see a subtraction, I think to myself, I've got to be careful with brackets here because otherwise the signs will all be wrong on my second half. And as soon as I see algebraic fractions added or subtracted from each other, I think I've got to have a common denominator. With algebra, the common denominator is almost always going to be the two things multiplied together, unless, of course, they have a common factor. Um, so I'm going to have as my common denominator, I'm going to change my pen, um, as my common denominator, I am going to have those two fractions multiplied together. So I've not fractions, um, two expressions multiplied together. And that means that this numerator here has got to be multiplied by x plus 1. So in brackets. And this numerator here has got to be multiplied by x plus 2. Remember, I've got a subtraction there. 2x minus 1, x plus 2. I am not going to multiply out my denominator. And that is because I think I'm going to be able to do some cancelling from my denominator. And in any case, if the question required it, I could do it at the end. So I'm going to leave my denominator alone, but I am going to multiply out my numerator because I can already see some cancelling that can happen. I've got a 2x squared that's going to happen there, a negative sign and a 2x squared there. So I can already see that I'm going to have some nice cancelling. So multiplying out these brackets, I've got a 2x squared a 2x and an x, so a 3x and a 1. Negative sign. Notice I put all of that in brackets. 2x squared, again, and then a 4x and a minus an x, so a 3x and then a minus 2. Okay, and that is all over x plus 2x plus 1. Simple signs in. And then I'm going to look and see what can be cancelled here. So the 2x squared there minus 2x squared there. So the 2x's can cancel. I'm only, if, don't ever obliterate them. If you do cross things out in your calculations, just sort of make them sort of like light, lightly crossed out so that somebody marking it can see that what you got when you multiplied out your brackets. I've got a 3x and a minus 3x. So those are going to be cancelling out. And so I've got a 1 minus, minus 2, so I've got a 3 on the top there, 3 over x plus 2, x plus 1. I'm just going to pause for a second. I don't know how to pause. Okay, right, the um, next question um, is question 2. Um, and um, I will write this one out. So this one is not a, um, an additional subtraction. It's a multiplication. OK, so multiplying. Um, I have got no, it isn't a multiplication. Sorry. It's a um, it's a division. Sorry, I've just been slightly put off by my daughter walking into the room. Um, uh, let me go. 4x squared plus x all over um, x squared um, minus 6x plus 9. OK, now, first of all, I've noticed I've got a division sign, so I know that ultimately I'm going to do a multiplication and take the reciprocal of this fraction. I've also, though, got a lot of quite complex expressions here, cubics, quadratics, etc. I am going to, before I do anything else, I'm going to factorise because I think by factorising it will make it seem simpler. But also I think I might be able to cancel some things out. OK, so factorising this expression on the top here, I've got... Um, x in both, so I'm going to make it a 4x squared minus 1. And that's over x minus 3. Now, as soon as I write that 4x squared minus 1, I've got to recognise something about it. It's got to scream at me. And the thing that it is screaming at me is that this is a difference of two squareds. It's a 4x squared, which in itself is squared, and a minus one. Okay, 
that should be screaming at you gentlemen okay next i'm going to keep the division in for the moment i will do the reciprocal and the multiplying in a second looking at the numerator here this has got an x in every term as well so i'm going to take the x outside and i've got a 4x squared plus a 4x plus a 1. 4x squared plus 4x plus 1. You may not recognise it immediately, but you will be factorising it in a moment. What I've got here is actually a perfect square. Doesn't matter if you don't immediately recognise that one. That one I think you should, but that one, perfect squares, we don't sort of look at quite so closely. We will end up, I think, with a 2x plus 1, 2x plus 1. Yeah, 2x plus 1 all squared. On the denominator here, I've got an x squared minus 6x plus 9. That one is also a perfect square. That one is x minus 3 all squared. Let's see, I've got to write it as x minus 3, x minus 3. So a few things to try and spot as you're doing these questions, yeah? So factorise them, and as you're factorising them, these are the thoughts that you should be having, OK? OK, right, so I'm going to leave my first um, um, side. Um, as a, no, I'm not, I'm not going to leave it exactly as it is. I'm going to do my perfect, uh, my, my dots here. So 4x squared minus 1 is a 2x plus 1 and a 2x minus 1. And that is all over x minus 3. Then I'm going to multiply and I'm going to do, take the reciprocals here. So I'm going to have an x minus 3, x minus 3 on the top there. On the bottom, I've got my x and then I've got this perfect square that I mentioned. So that's a 2x plus 1, 2x plus 1. OK, so I'm multiplying now and because I'm multiplying, I'm going to end up with all of this on the top and all of this on the bottom, all just written next to each other, so I can do some cancelling, OK? So, what things will cancel here? And remember, don't obliterate, just, just put them, um, uh, cross them out uh, neatly. So, the x and the x cancel out. A 2x plus 1 there and a 2x plus 1 there will cancel out. An x minus 3 there and an x minus 3 there will cancel out. That leaves me on the top of my fraction. That's going to leave me with a 2x minus 1 and an x minus 3. And on the bottom, I've just got a 2x plus 1. Now, I think in the answers at the back of the book, this x minus 3 is written as an x plus 3. That's wrong. Yeah, it should just be an x minus 3. OK, so lots to think about on this. Factorising, difference of two squares, perfect squares. Remembering to take the reciprocal and to um, multiply um, and then all this cancelling that happens. Key thing is not to overcomplicate it, not to overcomplicate it, factorise it. That will make life simpler for you. OK, last question then. So a similar sort of idea in that we've got to do. Um, lots of factorising on it. It's a cubic on the top and a quartic on the bottom. Question three. So, question three. I have got an x cubed minus 4x squared plus a 4x on the top. And I've got an x to the 4 minus 8x squared plus 16 on the bottom. Now, <clears throat> factorising, I think we can almost immediately see that with the numerator there, we can take an x out and then we'll have a quadratic. And that quadratic is a perfect square. So that one will end up being x minus 2, x minus 2. That will work for that one. Now, the one on the bottom what we've basically got here, instead of a quadratic, 
we've got a quartic, but it doesn't have a cube term and it doesn't have an X term. So effectively, what we've got here is something that looks a bit like a quadratic, but instead of being a quadratic in X, it's a quadratic in X squared. What I'm going to do is I'm going to do a little bit of substitution. I'm going to say Y equals X squared just for a moment and do a little side working over here. OK, in fact, I haven't really given myself enough space for my side working. I'll give myself a little bit more space. If y equals x squared in this quartic, I would have, instead of x to the 4, I'd have y squared. Instead of 8 um, x squared, I'd have 8y. And I'd have plus 16 on the end. That is a quadratic. And that quadratic in itself is also a perfect square. It's y minus 4 y minus 4. So if my x squared is actually the y, that means that I've got x squared minus 4, x squared minus 4 there. So I'm going to write my little note, my little hint here, looks like a quadratic. And it does. It's just that instead of a squared and an x, I've got a 4 and a 2. So this is an x squared squared, and this is just an x squared on its own. So I can factorise this quartic into x squared minus 4, x squared minus 4. We have seen ones like this before. We have looked at some that look like this before. And then, of course, these in turn are both difference of two squared. So we can do um, some factorising of those in turn. So carrying on our factorising then on the top, x squared minus 4x plus 4. I said that's a perfect square. It's an x minus 2, x minus 2. All factorised. And then on the bottom, I'm going to end up with four brackets because I've got my difference of two squares, but I've got it twice. So my x squared minus 4 is going to be an x plus 2, x minus 2. And then I've also got an x plus 2, x minus 2. Finally then, just doing that last bit of cancelling that you can all see now, that x minus 2 can go with that x minus 2, that x minus 2 can go with that x minus 2. And we are left with an x on the top and an x plus 2, x plus 2 on the bottom, an x plus 2 squared. OK, so gentlemen, this one, perfect squares and this, this idea of a quartic, but it doesn't have the cube term or the x term. So actually it's in the form of a quadratic. So you can take this approach and factorise it into x squared minus 4, x squared minus 4, yeah. So this idea of substituting in something else to be x squared, so that you've got a, so in this case a y, so that you've got a quadratic in y, do your factorising on that quadratic, it could be anything, and then substitute back in for your x squared. And that gives you this. Now, gents, you'll probably be fairly horrified to see that those are considered to be grade B questions in further maths. And that's because actually the skills you've used in them are pretty much GCSE skills. Yeah, just some um, uh, manipulation that uses quite a few skills. OK, so you just need to be super careful with them, obviously, keep your brackets. And the top tip on all of these ones, don't make them worse than they already are. Factorise first. And then once you've done your factorising, you can do some cancelling. Yeah. OK, well done, Jim.